Hi everybody, I'm Anime Games Aiden, and recently I've been playing a lot of SMT5, and as such, I've been wondering, what would I rank each game from worst to best? So I decided to just make a list. I'll be ranking the games from worst to best based mostly on my personal preference, but first I'll state what games I haven't played, because if I haven't played it, I can't rank it. First up is Demi Kids. Why? Well, it costs a lot of money. And also, I can't really be bothered to emulate it. Second is Digital Devil Saga 2. I haven't beaten the first one, so I don't have much of a reason to play it yet. Uh, next is Shin Megami Tensei 2. And really, I just haven't gotten the opportunity yet. Followed by Jack Bros, and the main reason is I just really never been interested, but I'll probably do it someday. Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. This is just because I haven't finished Innocent Sin yet, so I don't want to start it yet. And finally, really just any Japanese exclusive, because I don't speak Japanese, so I can't play them. Also, I did want to bring up, I have played Persona 5 Strikers, but I forgot. And as such, it didn't get put on the list. I'm sorry. But with that out of the way, let's get started with the list, starting with number 26. The later Persona dancing games are rip-offs that require so much paid DLC just to enjoy them. A lot of the content is made hidden from the player through DLC. You want a costume? DLC. You want a song? DLC. You want a story mode? Well, the game doesn't have one. It just feels incomplete and purposeless to me. I'm including these two games together because they're both Persona fighting games with little differences between them. But as Persona spin-offs go, these are two solid fighting games. The stories aren't that good, but the combat feels great. The games are developed by Arc, the same guys who did Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue. You're probably wondering, if these games are so good, why aren't they higher? I didn't want to put them higher on the list because it feels weird comparing a fighting game to an RPG. And also, you have to be Persona 4 to enjoy them. SMT IF, the precursor to the Devil Summoner and Persona timeline. <laughs> Bet you didn't know that. While a lot of people dislike IF, I don't. It's a fun old school RPG, even if it is an asset swap of SMT 2. It still has that old school Megaton combat and level up system. It's relatively low on the list for its age. The game was made for the SNES and, as such, doesn't have anything from modern Megaton that smoothens the experience. The original Shin Megami Tensei is a fun game that sadly has aged poorly. You need a guy to get around and the demon negotiation isn't that good. I mean, SMT had to start somewhere, and this was a pretty good start. The original Devil Summoner is a good time, it has great atmosphere, characters, and demons. I also really like the combat. My only problem is that the game's in Japanese. This takes a lot of enjoyment out of the game as I have to reference a guide anytime dialogue comes up. If the game was in English, it would be way higher up on the list. Poor Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE. Never stood a chance. Being a crossover of two of my favorite franchises, it had a lot to live up to. Sadly, the game's directors had a different idea and made a vague crossover. They said that they removed the strategy elements because they wanted to make a game that only Atlas can make, which I applaud trying to make the game in a strange direction, but the final product just doesn't hold my interest. I will say that if this game wasn't marketed as a crossover, but a collaboration between Atlas and Intelligent Systems, it probably would have held up better. I don't normally like action RPGs, which Raido is. I also don't like how you can only summon one demon at a time in this game. Not to mention, the combat is extremely clunky. I do like the 1920s Tokyo setting, but not enough to drown out the flaws. So that's why Raido's first game is at number 20.
I didn't really care that much for Digital Devil Saga, besides the story. It was engaging and interesting, but the gameplay was kind of boring in my opinion. In this game, you're only allowed two other party members instead of the normal three, and it slows down the gameplay. It's also made a lot harder because of that. And also, I wasn't a big fan of having party members instead of demons. I get each character is different, but if I want to play a Mega Ten game, I'm usually doing it for the demons in Fusion. While everything I said about the Persona 4 fighting games can be applied here, I honestly feel that Dancing All Night is a great time. Persona 4 has a great soundtrack, so it makes a perfect dancing game. The game plays and looks beautifully. I also love how it's jam packed with unlockable content. You can play just the free play mode and get your money's worth. Persona 4 Dancing All Night makes for a great night. <laughs> Technical foul! Technical foul! Anime game Zayden, how can you put Persona 5 so low on the list? Persona 5 is the best Atlas game ever made, and Royale is even better. They improved perfection, bub. It has the best cast out of any Persona game, and the best gameplay out of any RPG ever. While true, the gameplay is great. I won't lie, the story is boring and the cast sucks. I didn't find myself caring for anyone in my party, and the social links were just okay. Also, the story starts out good, but just goes nowhere until the second to last dungeon when it starts to speed up. Honestly, Persona 5 is just okay in my opinion. Persona 1 above Persona 5? Even Nolly put Persona 1 at the bottom. Technical foul! Yes, I know that I put this game above Persona 5, but it's only as high as it is for two reasons. One, Shoji Meguro. This was his passion project, and it shows, having some of the best tracks out of any Persona game. Number two, nostalgia. And I'm not talking about nostalgia I have for it. It's just a weird phenomenon whenever I boot this game up. I feel like I'm right back there in the 90s. Besides that, the rest of the game is pretty fair. But the charm this game has is certainly unique enough to make it stand out. Yeah. Hey. Catherine is such a weird game, but I loved it. It's technically a Mega Ten game. It includes a Law and Chaos meter, but it's not an RPG. It's a puzzle platformer, and a pretty good one at that. But the thing that draws people in is the story. Catherine has an amazing story that keeps you hooked the whole way through. I really don't have a lot to say about Devil Survivor 2. I think it's a good game, but really all it is is an expansion of the original Devil Survivor, which I really liked. The story isn't that good, but the gameplay is the same, so it's still worth checking out, in my opinion. Rhino 2 does everything a good sequel should. It improves upon my problems with the first game, having better combat and allowing you to summon two demons instead of one. It does bring back the negotiation system from other Mega Ten games, but I really didn't mind that. The only reason Strange Journey is here on the list is because of two reasons. The maps and the fusion system. The maps are big and complex, and there's also doors that you must directly scan. And you aren't clued into where these doors are, unless you're directly in front of them, which you don't need a queue. This means that you either have to go to game facts or explore the dungeons repeatedly to see if you missed even one. This doesn't sound too bad, except for the fact that the dungeons are huge. I also feel like the fusion system wasn't as good as other games. It seemed like every combination of demons almost always resulted in the same demon, making it seem like there wasn't really a purpose to fuse sometimes.
Persona 2 is a fantastic game, except when combat happens. It feels like a lot of the dungeons have an unnecessarily high encounter rate, even by Mega 10 standards. And a lot of the demons have arbitrary weaknesses and strengths. The negotiation system also kinda sucks, but the story and atmosphere are awesome. Also, it's cool to see the SMTF protagonist again. Now we're on the top 10 of the list, and at the top here, we have Persona 3. This one is mostly up here for age. While Persona 3 is a fun game, and has a great story, I really didn't like the combat. In the PS2 version specifically, having your partners controlled for you is a horrible idea for such a strategy heavy game. And while P3P fixes this issue, it loses all the style and charm the PS2 version had. Meaning, each version has a drawback, and becomes a pick-your-own-poison scenario. Persona Q2 is a great dungeon-crawling RPG that fixes the combat problems of Q1. The only problem is that it doesn't live up to the crossover aspect of Q1. Q2 really plays more to the Phantom themes than any other Persona cast. You're stuck with them for the first quarter of the game, and Joker is designated as the main character on harder difficulties. It really just sucks for people like me who didn't enjoy Persona 5's cast. And also, the game's not dubbed, because Atlas decided to cheap out on the localization. While the combat and dungeon designs are not as good as Q2, Q1 is one of the best crossovers I've ever seen. It allows you to choose which party you want to start with, and this affects the in-game music, causing it to play variations that sound more like the party you chose. And while many people complained about the flanderization of the P3 and P4 cast, I really didn't mind. Finally, the game looks amazing. The style of the game sets is a mixture of P3 and P4. It's really cool because it must have been hard to combine these two very stylistic games. SMT5 is a great modern SMT game. The Essence Fusion system is a great feature, allowing you to buff demons with new skills. I also like the Navigators, allowing you to pick up buff items wherever you want. I only dislike certain parts of the game. The second and third maps could use some retooling, and so could the Fusion system. I also feel the story needed just a bit more work, not in how it's delivered, but how it doesn't feel like the player has much choice. It feels like the alignment lock happens way too late into the game and causes subsequent playthroughs to not have much variation. Overall, not a bad game, just shy of meeting greatness in my opinion. Soul Hackers is in my opinion the definition of style over substance, but in a good way. While most SMT games are set in modern day, Soul Hackers is set in a cyberpunk dystopia, which the game fully embraces, letting you customize your comp, called a gump in this game, and being part of a group of hackers. The atmosphere in this game is amazing. Every track and setting is perfect. Also, the supporting cast is great. I loved every member of the Spookies. If you can find this game, I'd highly recommend picking up a copy. SMT4 Apocalypse is mostly just an expansion of SMT4, which I don't mind as I really liked SMT4. The inclusion of Infinities adds a whole new level to Demon Fusion, as you can't just put whatever skills you want on Demon, without a penalty of course. It also boosts the skills that the Demon has the affinity to, which is great. The game's only problem is its party members. Most of them are just anime cliches but they aren't bad enough to hurt the game that much for me. This is the first game on the list that I would consider perfect. The story is really enthralling, and the time management aspect keeps the player in suspense, 
as a decision you made earlier in the game may come back and bite you. This was also the first game to refine the fusion system, making it easier to get what abilities you want on each demon. Also, quick side note, I loved the idea of the demon auction house, it was such a great way to obtain demons. Nocturne is an awesome experience. You start the game out weak as HE double hockey stick, but over time you turn to a powerful demon. The fusion system in this game is pretty solid, and also I really enjoyed the side quest. While there's not a lot, each one is unique and fleshes out the world even more. Persona 4 embodies everything that a Persona game should for me. The story is great and the cast is even better. Each party member is great, and I enjoy doing their social links. The setting of Inaba is amazing. While there's not much to do, it's cozy and feels like home almost instantly. The soundtrack is the best out of any Mega 10 game. And finally, this game has such great pacing. I feel like you're given enough time to do each dungeon, and the story flows seamlessly with it. Persona 4 is a 10 out of 10 game for me, and it's hard to believe that there's even a game better than it. I know that I said Persona 4 embodies everything that a Persona game should for me. Well, SMT 4 embodies everything I want in an SMT game. The fusion system is amazing. You can get lost in it and have yourself a fusion power hour. Letting the demons whisper skills to Flynn is a great way to customize your protagonist. I also really like the story. The game perfectly lets you understand what each side embodies what law and chaos mean for this world. In this game, the law, chaos, and neutral heroes have personalities, and they perfectly embody the ideology they represent. And the map of Tokyo is fun to move around in. And while the side quests aren't as good as Nocturnes, a couple of them are really good and create a whole side story. The game is fantastic, and I'm glad I got to experience it. I'm glad I finally got to say what I think of each game, and rank them too. I just hope everyone enjoyed the video and we'll all be civil about this. What the? Who's at my door? I'm sorry Mr. Anime Game Zayden, but I can't let you live for putting Persona 5 so low on the list. Oh god, Whitey, please no!